Well, I don't know what happened, everybody. Um, <sighs> that live just interrupted itself. And I'm not sure why. Um, I don't know if that's Facebook doing that. Can everybody see me? Let me pull up. Let me let me see if I can pull up pull this one up because I don't exactly know what happened. But um, if anybody else is in this one, say something. Let me see if I can get this up. Uh. Okay, hold on. Who, who, everybody who was in the other one, come on over to this one. That other live just cut off by itself. And let me um get some people in here. See if I can do some invites after I start this. Uh, Quante was interrupted. Um... So what I'm going to do is um, go down the line here and start um, pulling in some other people. Sorry, man. I don't know why this platform cut that thing off. I am connected through Wi-Fi and I only have a very small view here of who is and isn't um, in them. So I'm going to wait just a minute. Uh, King, Ra, would you like to speak next, ma'am? Yeah, here you go. I'm going to pull you in. It was nice talking with you, Quinte. Uh, man, I'm glad you're battling uh, to be who you are. And... Uh, we're with you, man, because we're all doing the same thing. Okay, let me see if I can um bring. I did try to um invite some people that were watching the other one, but I actually have. There you are. What's up, man? Hey, what's going on? Hey, ain't nothing but the rent, you know. Right. <laughs> Woo-wee. I don't know what happened to that other live. Did it just turn off? Just shut down. Well, the... I don't know. The last time I checked, the uh, the length of time you could do these lives was like four hours. They could have changed that though. I don't know. Yeah, you know how. Yeah, they changed things. So, man, what say you? What's up? Uh, everything, everything. <laughs> yeah, I've been listening in here. I guess we need to wait till we get a few more people. I know. They all got lost in the other yeah. one. Yeah. And I know we've invited a ton of people, so Man. even still after. Ask, um, okay, I'm going to go back to the other one real briefly and tell everybody that it, it disappeared and uh, to jump on over to this new one. All right. So you can just hang there for a minute while I do that. All right. I got Silk here also going over to people to come over. And then I'm going to put a link to that second one in this one. How about that? Yep. That sounds like a plan. Okay. Thank you, Sarah, for following. <laughs> Here's where we went. Okay. All right. Well.
we'll see what happens here. All right. Yep. There were a lot of people in that other one. Ooh, I can't stand this platform sometimes, man. Yeah. And hello to everybody who was in the other one. I don't want to call you out by name just in case you don't want me to do that. But everybody that was in the other one can join this one. And I put a link. I put a link in um, the first one to the one we're in right now. Okay, people are starting to come, man. All right, all right. Sicily, I see Sicily. Where there's a will, there's a way, huh? Oh, yeah, they coming on in. Let me see. Uh-oh, there looks like there's three of them. What the <laughs> heck? Oh, no, there isn't. Okay, no, there's still just two. So let's... um. So what has been what has been redefining yourself as a man been like for you? Redefining myself, it's, it's been a positive experience. I mean, even in looking back, um, socially and professionally, defining myself as a man since my transition has been awesome. Great. So you know. So no um, pushback for you? Um, I wouldn't say a pushback. I mean, it's been a step forward. Everything's been positive. Okay. I mean, back. Um, first of all, I think masculinity for everybody is different. Mm -hmm. You can be of male identity, cis or trans male and not be masculine in somebody else's opinion. Yeah. I think masculinity is is a personal thing and it consists of many different things, environment, role modeling, I mean your community, everything. I mean this is where you get your thoughts, your feelings, your mannerisms. And those things for me shaped and mold me into the man that I am today. Mm -hmm. Um positive or negative. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean growing up I listened to women and what they complained about, what they did want, what they didn't want, what was working for them. You know, it was times that I watched my mother cry because of a man. Yeah. And I knew I did not want to be and I would not be that kind of man. You know, um different experiences have shaped and molded me into the man that I am today. And this wasn't instantaneous. I transitioned today, and I'm the perfect man, or I'm the man that I am today. This took time. It took some, some positives. It took some negatives. Mm -hmm. It took some real negatives. I mean, but <laughs> it takes time. This not you throw it in the microwave and it's ready. <laughs> oh, I wish it was that easy. Yeah, but it's Pop not. That sucker in there and stick it on a couple of minutes and boom, out the other end. Right, the man you want to be. Uh, uh, no, it's it's pretty much like puberty. Number, you know, our second puberty and growing into this. From that, that that it is. Yeah, from where we came um, from. I was socialized. I was socialized as a woman. I fought it, but nonetheless, mm -hmm. that's how people saw me. So that's how I was socialized. I mean, for me, I can pretty much say I've been who I am all my life. Facial hair, everything, before anything, you know. So for me, from puberty, everybody knew who I was. From the first puberty, from 13, 12, 13 years old? 12 to 13, I had facial hair growing. Wow. I mean, but that's a little different issue. My hormones were way off. I mean, so... I understand what was happening with me. Um, it's masculinity, said, oh like I said. <laughs> said, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. But like I was saying, I promised myself that I would not be the negative images that I grew up watching. Mm, okay. You know, it took 
time, patience, heartache, and understanding, you know. And when I stepped back and observed everything, mm-hmm. I had to balance within myself mm-hmm. to build the man that I am. Mm-hmm. You know, um, a man's masculinity is his own personal perception. Yes. You know, and how you perceive yourself, it's kind of like what you project will reflect. Okay. And if you're projecting a positive in- image, you're projecting confidence Mm. that's what's going to respect to others Mm -hmm. what about those poor brothers that are running around though with zero confidence in the man it's a it's about brothers like us pulling them up you know when you don't have positive trans male role models i mean what can you go off of the negative images that you see in the media what they say a trans man is well the negative what do they know? exactly exactly they don't. that's why we need more forums like this to show these brothers that there are positive trans men out here yeah that do have some level of confidence that we can pay forward to them if only they would let us exactly yeah, that's that's yeah. why I have this because the media, especially mainstream media, they don't know shit about us. They ain't looking for us. Uh, <laughs> they know more about trans women than they do about us. So, and we're fighting against the patriarchal of males, other males mm-hmm. out there. I mean, for me personally, since I've completely transitioned. Socially and professionally, mm-hmm. I've got nothing but positive. Nothing but positive. Doors have opened. I mean, and it's pretty sad because today I can sit back and I see the difference. Mm. You know? Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. You know, I the level of respect has changed for me. And only in places where they knew what I was, that you know, they knew that I hadn't transitioned. Those people are still paying a lot of disrespect to me, especially the VA. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And people yeah. that knew me from before, so I'm having to deal with that, which is not a positive experience. Mm-hmm. I'm still gonna come out ahead because I'm out to transform them people. <laughs> exactly, and that's what it's all about. I mean, you transitioned, and that was transforming. So now you have to change and transform the mindsets of people who don't understand who you are today, who you've always been been. inside, just not outside. And now that you've made that transition outside, now you have to transition them as well. Yeah. I mean, this is not, exactly, this is not uh, just, just self. I mean, for me, my family transitioned with me, mm-hmm. and it was a transition for them as well. My with, kids, my wife, with it no was a support transition. system to help them deal with what we was dealing with, they didn't have the same level of support we do. Exactly. Nor do they really and look you know, for it either. It almost has to be. I'm not sure how. Well, that's why it takes family so much more time uh, Mm -hmm. to transition with us because they have absolutely, they're talking amongst themselves, which is the blind leading the blind. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I even find that my mother still has a difficult time, but she's accepting. Okay. She's accepting and adapting, I should say. You know, I mean... Yeah, if you go from seeing somebody as this for all their life and then they transition, they switch on you, it takes you time. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of us get angry yeah. because we're gendered by family. But honestly, you have to understand that it's going to take them some time too. Yeah, it does. It takes them even longer. It took me three years yep. to embrace this. So if it took okay. me three years... How can I expect them without the level of support that I have to to transition at the same speed? 
They don't even understand it, let alone understand what they're grappling with as they see a man in front of them that they always thought was a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I didn't get the I didn't get the benefit of looking like any kind of male when I was a teenager. So I mean I I did in my clothing and I did in my mannerisms, but that didn't count. Because it really to them it's all about my genitals. Right. It's perception. What you see is is what you believe to be. Yeah. You know? Um I can use my wife for example. My wife is a drag performer, but every day, all day at home, she is not in drag, ultra female, total female. But if she goes and does a show, that's a man. And people don't sometimes don't understand the difference. They just think that, can I use your name? Mm -hmm. They just think that it's Prince Silk all day, every day. And it's not. And it's hilarious to me. You know, I mean, so what people perceive is is what they deal with. Well, that, it looks like a duck. That goes for the entire entertainment industry. Mm-hmm. A lot of people right. are just, that's a persona, but that is exactly who they are. At <laughs> right, right. You know, look at the oh, characterization. Yeah that they make about people as powerful as uh, the Williams sisters. Right. They don't know those oh, yeah. are total femmed out femmes when they're not on the tennis mm-hmm. court. They're beasts. But when they step exactly. off that tennis court, they are who they are. But everybody wants mm-hmm. to attach what they see on TV to that's all they are. Right, right. But yeah, you don't have people doing that to you much anymore, right? I mean, you've been doing, you've been in your transition for a long time. Right, yeah, I don't get any of that at this point, you know. But some of the trans girls, they get it often. Yeah, because a lot of people think, oh, they just a drag. They this is a persona. This is a character. Yeah, you know, when it's not. This is who they are. Yeah. that's that's difficult I mean but today I'm because I'm this is me every day all day right facial hair don't come off when I wipe my face (laughs) you know (laughs) thank god (laughs) the hair don't grow back (laughs) I know and I'm I'm losing mine right I'm gonna have to make a decision though Either look like man, I just took it all off. Bozo or keep it shaved, which I don't want to do. But um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but maybe I'll just be one of them guys with you know hair over here, but none up here. Who knows? Hey, I don't know what, I'm what it is. Yeah, but that was another thing that hit me is I didn't think this would happen. Um, I didn't think I'd start going bald, even though I knew that mm-hmm. was one of the risks of uh, being on testosterone is is balding. Right. Um, it didn't happen for the first two and a half years, two and a half to three years, it didn't happen. Then all of a sudden, boom, it was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's part of what the medication, it, it does that. that. That is definitely one of the side effects. I had a guy ask me recently, how does it grow on your face and everywhere else on your body, but you lose your hair? On your head, you know, that's part just part of the phenomenon. Exactly. I mean, now that we got some people coming in, um, as I stated in the beginning, uh, masculinity is individuality. That is not just a term. Masculinity comes from within. You know, as I stated You can be cisgender, transgender, whatever you want to call it, and you may not be viewed as masculine. It's a personal persona that comes from within. Yeah, everybody Um, finds it. It's built on your character, your role models, your environment, and, and how you perceive and carry yourself. Masculinity 
is a matter of perception. And your perception determines how you how you carry it, how you present it. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. You know, and you know, I've heard things is it's like hmm, a man defines who he is. And it doesn't matter what kind of man you are. It's your perceptions or what it is you want that's going to dictate that. Nobody else. Exactly. I mean, there's some brothers out here who present a lot of toxic masculinity, and, I, and I'm just going to keep it real and say it. You know, there's a lot of toxic masculinity out here because media plays a part in how some of the guys perceive themselves and what masculinity is. Um, were you in that post about, where people were talking about that with me? No. Toxic masculinity. I think that's perception too. Uh, you know, what I see is a lot of kids trying to figure out who the hell they are. Um, and it may lop over into being toxic, but I think that comes from more than just masculinity. I see a lot of toxic people. I see toxic females. I see toxic non-binary people. I see toxic people. It has nothing to do with gender. Exactly. I mean, it's about, for me, I can personally say that finding my masculinity and defining my masculinity which is actually two different things. Um, I had to find balance within myself. Um, I had to be, how can I say, sensitive but not weak mm -hmm. and, and, and be understanding and fair and, and responsible. I had to know when to stand up and when to sit down. I had to know when to speak and when to be quiet and observe. You know what and reminds me it of? Was the Karate Kid. Troubles exactly. You, like you weave in balance. balance. You roll in with the punches. Yeah, well, it's about finding balance in anything. Right. <clears throat> and if you don't have balance, you're going to swing way one direction or you're going to swing way another direction without finding that happy medium for yourself. That's very true. I mean, it, but going back to the, the toxic masculinity, a lot of the trans guys that I'm seeing today are angry. They're angry. They're, they're, they think that being a man is being hard and being tough and <laughs> well, I a better term, a thug. And I just, I don't get it. And when they find the battle, and realize that they've wasted a lot of time presenting a persona that is not acceptable. I mean, then they begin to calm down and mm -hmm. try to pull it. I'm telling you, it's more about growing up than anything. You know, I, exactly. I've seen, I don't see it as much because it travels, uh, the circles I travel in, I don't mm -hmm. see a lot of under 25 year olds. I do see some, but most of them that are crazy like that are on this platform. <laughs> they talk a big talk, but I bet you if I was sitting there face to face with them, they wouldn't come off that way. Not with me. Because I well, it's about teaching them. Mm -hmm. It's about teaching them and, and presenting that, that positive balance. I mean, and providing some guidance at this point. I mean, like I said, if you don't have trans role models, then what else can you look up to but what you're seeing in your community, in your environment, in your household, and in the media? Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, so a societal point, issue, too. It's a societal, societal it thing. I mean, I, I, I find that in it, it, here on Facebook, I mean, I read the posts, I see the stuff, you know, I get information and, and questions from some of the guys for advice. Um, met a guy a few days ago, 
looking for a job and he told me that he had some domestic violence issues and on his record, you know, and it was like, well, I can't hire you. We can't hire you. I mean, because of your background. I mean, and his his whole conversation was, had I had somebody to teach me the difference that you just walk away, then maybe I wouldn't have that situation, you know? And that's why I keep pushing. It's about teaching. Mm -hmm. It's about presenting. I mean, it's about changing the 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 thought pattern and the ideas and, and what's presented out here. I mean, you look at these videos because I have teenagers and I look at some of the videos they look at. It depicts violence. It depicts domestic violence. It degrades women, you know, and I'm just kind of totally against the videos and, and some of the rap stuff. Yeah. Because it's not positive. Yeah. I mean, and when you're shaping and molding young minds, yeah. they look at this and they, they believe that this is what it's about. Yeah. This is how I'm supposed to treat a woman. Yeah. This is how I'm to act. It, it used to be that it took a village to raise a child. Um, it's not that way anymore. Um, I don't know about you, but there's a whole lot of young people who really, who, who don't want to be taught. They want to have a hard head and soft behind. <laughs> I mean, but that goes back to society and the fact that children and young adults are raising themselves. Yes. Oh, Lord, yes. Many single parent homes where the parent just can't be there. Yeah. I mean, the way society is at this point, there are not many families. Yeah. And the male is not in the home. So the mother doesn't have the support. Um, they don't have a family structure. I mean, I don't see a lot about transgendered families. I mean, and me personally, me and my wife has not done anything on that platform or that level because it's about transparency. And I'm not sure I want my kids exposed and put out there like that. Yeah. I hear you, man. How it, it it needs to be done. And as the kids get older, it's something that I will discuss with them and see if they're willing to be exposed, you know, mm -hmm. so that the issue can be discussed. Yeah. I mean, if there's no family structure, then you have no values. Yeah. I see what you mean. Unless positive role models in a trans, not just in a trans, in a community, period. I won't just say trans because it does take a village and we should be a village and it should not be separated. However, it is. <laughs> you know, you know, if they accepted us, we, we could, if they, if the acceptance was much better and they weren't so that goddamn afraid of us, we could be part of the village. Exactly. Uh, but this if they true. kick us out of the village, we can't have any influence over the village called our family. Very true. Yes, this is think true. About that, you know. Oh I'm, yeah. I think you know. I've got a lot of my family in a secret place where I'm slowly educating them, and because they're letting me in that village, I can influence them. Each one teach one, and they can go out and talk to their children or their other family members who are having a hard time. But for a while there, I was outside the village because everybody was, right. oh my God, what the fuck is that? What? And it took my sister passing away for me to go home for the first time. Right. And the love I got when I got there, even though people didn't understand what was going on, they still knew my heart. They still knew me. And that mm. opened the door to the village called my family. Right, right. I mean, but it's so sad that a lot of the transgender youth, transgender people, period, are kicked out of that village. Yeah. And the, the, the gay and transgender community becomes their village. Yeah. So it's very important to eliminate the toxic masculine toxicity, period. 
I won't just say masculinity within the gay village. Within the, the human, within the human race. It, that, I, 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 I totally agree it's with that. But since everywhere. Exactly, it is. So, I mean, it, it's important that we do. I know here in Wisconsin, there's a youth summit coming up in a couple of days, I believe it is. I mean, and I'm pretty sure I'm hoping that these are some of the issues that will be touched on at that summit. You know, I mean, it's important. Where? Where? Uh, what state? It's it's here in Wisconsin. Okay. I believe it's uh, probably in Wisconsin Dales. Okay. Uh, my assistant here, when she comes back, can give me some more information about it. Well, we're gonna, um, we're gonna make some room for some other guys to jump in here and give yeah. their two cents worth on on this yeah, particular issue but before Facebook cuts me off again. I don't know when that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in hearing from some of the other guys. Most definitely. Yeah, I think there are some other ones in here that. Um, hold on, let me see. Um. Okay, we've knocked out. We've got. We've knocked out two. The, oh, yeah, we do have one more. But let me see if he's in here. But listen, man, I appreciate you sharing um your experience, strength, and hope in the matter. And uh, you know, we'll do another one about another topic. Right. I want to get some some youth in here. I want to get some everybody in here. Well, I just grab and, people. You know, I don't let even them chime. Anybody's age. I just talk to people. I put out a flyer. If they want to be invited in the live, I don't even know how old anybody is. So, um, but yeah, they're free. Oh, it is. Community Resort was coming up. I posted that uh, youth summit information there. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, you can, somebody awesome. can take it and put it in the. Um, Oh, look. Okay, somebody put it in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Man. Well, you, you know I love you, know. right? Oh, yeah, we'll talk later. All right, you take care, King Ron. All right. All right. Uh, Sha, where you at, man? Are you in here? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm I'm looking, dudes. Sha, are you around? Pretty boy, are you around? Pretty boy said, "Listen, man, I don't see." Um, Shaw, so are you in here? Who is that? Okay, so we're talking about uh, trans man ma uh, manhood, trans male manhood, and you know, King Ra brought up some you know pretty major points, and that our youth are a little lost and have spun out into toxic masculinity. But again, I think that's a um, societal issue for the most part, especially in the hood. Um, and people are being influenced, are young being influenced by music and a lot of other negative things. Um, I'm looking, hi, Ashley. We're live, honey. We're talking about uh, manhood and uh, for trans males. And I'm looking through. Oh, you are around here somewhere. Let me see if I can pull you in. Pretty boy. Yeah. I see you, man. I just sent you an invite. Can you hear me? What's up? What's up? 
What's up, man? How you doing? Good. How are you? And it's good Sunday night. I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. I'm 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 so glad that uh to be able to provide this platform for various trans men. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, go for it and um then tell us your take on this thing called manhood and what that's like to transition to that. If you have. Uh oh. Are you Can you are hear you me? on Wi Fi, man? No, I'm not Wi Fi. Oh, okay. Well, it's showing something weird up there. But what say you? Um, well, I feel like my um my experience is very unique, being that um uh, I am navigating it and starting it uh, on an HBCU campus. So so being that uh I am part of the what would be called the one percent because I'm basically navigating this by myself. I don't really have a lot of community at all. It's just, it's just me on my campus. Wow. Um, um, within the AUC, um, I typically have to travel outside of the AUC to find somewhat community, even sometimes most of them is not, that's not even successful. Um, right now, I'm a year and probably seven months within my transition. Okay. And... Uh, in the beginning, uh, I was very insecure. I was, uh, there was a lot of insecurity. There was a lot of um, fear because my environment being that it's on an HBCU uh, campus, being that it is in the South, in the middle of the Bible Belt, and being well, that HBCUs are founded on um, a, conser a very conservative um, platform. Yes, sir. Uh, it's very toxic. You know what? So, what? What exactly does HBCU stand for? Um, historically black colleges and universities. So yeah. typically if a person is not going to a historically black college or university, they're going to what is called a PWI, which is your, you know, your Georgia States, your Michigan States, your Harvards, your um, pretty much your predominantly white institutions. Anything that's not historically black is nine times out of ten at HBCU and then you also have historically um, Hispanic universities as well but they're more so in Texas, Mexico and California area okay. Okay. so being that I am in the south I go to an HBCU um, I am in the AUC which is the Atlanta University Center Clark uh, which consists of Clark Atlanta, Spelman, Morehouse Morris Brown, ITC um, okay. I go to uh, CAU, so Clark Atlanta. So being that I am at an HBCU that is both co-ed, uh, majority uh, female population, uh, and then there's a very small male population. Um, it is extremely toxic. Really? Uh, uh, so typically, I have to navigate this experience stealth in order to keep my head above water because if I were to be quote unquote out, it would draw a lot of attention and then it would draw a lot of unnecessary debates and arguments. And one thing I refuse to do is debate my existence. Um, wow. Yes. So, so with that, so are you limited? Are you limited from support because of transportation or um, because you can't get off? campus to get support off campus or is because your entire city is there's no within, resources within first, there within my first year it was due to transportation because i didn't have my car then okay so when within my first year it was due to transportation i didn't have my car and with the um, necessary um resources i did have i didn't really know about and the ones that i tried to navigate to through like Uber and whatever transportation was able available to me. Mm -hmm. um, every time I would show up, co coincidentally, they wouldn't be there. And so, <laughs> no! and, and so it was like when I tried to go get the community, they wouldn't be there. But when I was unavailable to actually go because of work or whatever, they would be there. So it'd be like, Okay, is the universe trying to tell me that, okay, you're supposed to be stealth? Because that's the message I'm continuously getting. Um, and so there's that aspect, too. And so... Well, have you changed one, your name or any of that process yet? Or wh where exactly are you? Oh, okay. So basically, when I first... Um, okay, I'm just going to go through the whole timeline. Okay. In 2014, 
uh, all fall 2014 is when I first came to the re uh, realization that, okay, uh, you're trans. Uh, the first time I actually started showing, noticing signs of transness was when I was a junior in high school. Okay. So that was like 2012. Um, at that point, I looked up what trans was, but for the most part, when I got down to like looking at the surgery and stuff, it freaked me the hell out. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> <laughs> the same way. I was the same way in 2012. And so then in 2014, fall 2014, no, yeah, fall of 2014, um, I came to the realization, okay, yeah, I'm trans. And then I was just, you know, going by my new name. I'm at a new institution. I'm starting college um, and community college. So I'm back at home up north in Michigan. So it's much more progressive in the north than it is in the south. And so I'm I'm comfortable in myself, but at the same time, I have to keep you have to keep in mind that I am a PK. So, what's PK? I'm a preacher's kid. A who? I'm a preacher's kid. A preacher's kid. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm a preacher's kid. Um, a grand PK at that. Um, so my grandparents are pastors as well. Wow. Um, my adoptive yeah. parents were pastors my birth mother is not a minister she's just a pk like me um so there's that aspect um i went to go you know support my grandparents preaching right because they were guest preaching at another church and at that time they um i was still living they still only knew me as a lesbian i did not tell them that i was trans yet oh okay and so at that point, they, they, they weren't really clean on you know the whole gay thing, and but my grandfather he was more so um, he didn't really shove it in your face. He would more so be like um, passive aggressive with it, being more so like he wouldn't say what you're doing is wrong, but he'd be more so like you know try and bond with you, talk with you, and then just show you scriptures in the Bible. And being that I had already, I was already well equipped in how to debunk that because I wrote bazillions of papers on how homosexuality was misinterpreted in the Bible. It really didn't affect me like he thought it was affecting me. So there was that aspect. But then ultimately, uh, I'm just going to call it what it was. I felt like I was being ambushed in the church and they basically laid hands on me. And they tried to, quote, unquote, deliver me from the spirit of homosexuality. So I call it their version of an exorcism. It happens to every single LGBT person in my family. Um, they, everybody tends to go through that process at one point or another in their experience being within that family. Wow. So I wasn't, the first, I wasn't the first one to go through it. Actually, it was my um, cousin who's a gay man. He's deceased now. God rest in peace. He was actually the first one. He was the, pretty much the gatekeeper. He was the first openly LGBT person in our family. And he went through it. And then, of course, then there was my other cousin. He's also a gay man. He came out as bisexual first, though. And then, of course, me. It didn't work, did it? Was, it didn't work. They were still gay. <laughs> gay as can be. Gay as they want to be. See, they keep um, thinking this is a choice when it's... I fought this from the time I found out. I fought it. For three right. years, I fought it. Right. And I mean, because, like... Even when it came to being quote unquote gay, like I fought that for like two, three years before I finally just every, every single time I I've, I've noticed every single time I've come to a turning point in my life where it's like, okay, you're not this and you're I'm continuously trying to fight it. I go on the verge of, okay, either you're going to die or you're going to just have to come out and be yourself. Yeah, they used the to talk thing. about that in the 1980s a lot. A lot of gay people were committing suicide because they were having such a hard time with society until we fought for people's right to be gay, lesbian, bisexual at the time. Yeah. Um, and, so, and then that suicide rate went down. Yeah. And now we're and so, I mean, coming back. Yeah, but, you know, with trans. So... When it came to me coming into my first world, I, at the first person I told was actually my friend. He was one of my guy friends. And I told him, he was like, okay, so what does that mean? So if I burp, will you care? I was like, no. He was like, okay, cool. Huh? <laughs> that's just, that's his, yeah, that's his way of affirming, okay, cool, you're a guy. 
So that was, <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, a lot I had a lot more su- um, support coming from my guy friends than the mm. women. They were really? like, "Yeah." So I mean, typically I hear the opposite with you know trans females, but I've actually had a lot more support with guys. Wow. Um, uh, yeah, and being so that, when it came to navigating who you are as a man, did you were you looking at your friends as were they role models for you or no? No, no. My friends weren't really typically role models for me, especially being, especially since they're cis and being that I view a lot of cis men as being toxic and being able how to detect that, that wasn't um, an influence of mine. I actually had to, I studied them, but at the same time, I was like, I took what was I pretty much created my own man yes as do all men I I, really I took that opportunity to because I know a lot of my guy friends they really um were depressed or somewhat hurt that they didn't have a quote-unquote male figure in their their life and I could understand that to a degree because I don't really typically have a lot of trans male figures in my life to look up to but at the same time I took that opportunity to um not fall into now I had, I, you know, my father and certain males in my family are like, well, you know, if you need help learn how to be a man, I can teach you. I was like, well, I don't really like your type of manhood because it's very toxic. So I'm gonna stay over here. Um, so I took that opportunity to develop my what the type of man that I would want to be. You know, I find this very interesting because God, there's so many young people who just fall into the pattern without even realizing that it's toxic and you yeah. realize what was and wasn't all by yourself yeah I mean I typically I, I take that into account being that I, I know that I'm not like most people my age because I've always been told that I'm a wise old soul so I typically like to I typically gravitate to people that are very much older than me okay which is why I did have a close relationship with my grandfather. Um, because I typically like being around older people. If I was around younger people, it was just to say that, okay, I fit in because I have people my age that are friends. Yeah. But typically, I enjoy company of older people. Like, cause, and it also can relate in like my dating life. I tend to date women that are out a lot older than me, like large gaps. So there's that aspect too. But when it came, like when it came to me actually coming into my manhood and Mm -hmm. my my experience, it it took some time because at at one point I did get sucked into when, you know, you go through that process of quote unquote being delivered. You're like, and my mom asked me, she was like, well, are you still gay? I was like, being that are you still attracted to women like um, yeah (laughs) yeah i'm still attracted to women (laughs) but uh i also got i felt extremely spiritually vulnerable so i ended up joining a religious cult where i almost got raped and then my family had had to pray me out and eventually had to come to my own senses to leave and I left, but then I basically I had to I had to start back over from square one. And the one thing that did remain was the fact that I was quote unquote trans, and that was one thing that stayed. And so, being that I had to literally start my whole process, like my whole like I felt like my whole existence was starting over. Yeah, I had well, to redefine. What? I had to redefine my spirituality because by being in that cult, like it basically stripped away my Christianity because they de-doctrinate you from Christianity and with the Bible. Really? With the Bible. With the Bible. The Hebrew Israelites, with the Bible. Okay, okay, this is interesting. I've never heard of such a thing. I, I thought the whole idea of them, the whole idea of you being in a cult, what, was it to change what you believed? 
Okay, so basically what I was in was called Israel United in Christ, mm -hmm. and they um, identify as being Hebrew Israelites. Oh, okay. And so they believe they are the chosen ones. So within those groups of people, um, that one specifically, the guys in purple, they um, condemn Christianity, and they use the Bible to do it. Uh -huh. And they use... And they use extensive amounts of information to, um, quote, unquote, prove their point. So if you was able to talk to one, you would basically be in a debate or an argument with them. And if you, because they believe that they're right. Um, you and know, so, all, I can, all I can think of right now is for anybody who is watching this, who is ultra conservative and right wing and religious and Christian or Israelite, Religion, stop it. You can't pray this <laughs> stuff away. You can't Literally. change this. It's for you to and accept so, it and embrace us and love us or get the fuck away from us because you will kill honestly. us. Kill who we are inside just be, to fit your idea of what you think a worthy human being should be to, to be like. You can't change yeah. this stuff uh, from and the so, outside. Yeah, so typically with being in that quote unquote cult, um, of course, they put me on the women's side because they go by what you were assigned at birth. Yeah. Um, and so with that, you know, they you, real traditional dresses, the whole nine. Um, so that was traumatic in itself um, for many reasons. And then yeah, well, when the, I can once I left, once I left, it was, and they, 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 it's more so like a, an environment to quote unquote feed the ego of the black cis male to bring him up to the level of a white cis male. And you still have oppression for women, but it's pretty much black cis men living at the paradise of a white cis male. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that is deep. You know, and so that, I have to tell you yeah, it really, right now, to me, really, you are so strong. I have to give you credit for being able to figure your way out of that and still not lose you in the process. Yeah, and so typically I don't, being everything that I went to, I typically don't tell people. So most people at my campus don't even know. Yeah. And I navigate that stealth. Um, I've experienced a lot of toxic femininity. Um, well, told you it goes all genders. It doesn't matter. Especially black women being that I quote unquote dodge black, mis black toxic mis masculinity because I don't really deal with a whole lot of men because Frankly, I really don't deal with men that don't strike me as being the most intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna keep it I'm just gonna keep it frank. If all you have to talk about is real. sports and what is between a woman's leg and sex, then we really don't have nothing to talk about. Well, if you can't have life than that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like if you can't talk to me about philosophy or psychology or um why the universe or why we what, the reason for our existence like astrology like other topics spirituality then we really don't have much to talk about humanity basically. yeah humanity in, in general like the history of our people why we're in the situation that we're in mm -hmm. all intersectionality like so there's that. And then being that I'm a mass media major and a psych minor, there's there's another dynamic because like one of my first um, instances experiencing um, uh, to uh, toxic femininity was actually in the dorms. It was in the dorms because at the time I was still living with women. Okay. And to them, they were just passing off, oh, she's gay. They're still misgendering me this, that, and the third. And then being that in this, oh my gosh, it wasn't until this last year where it got like completely worse. Yes. And completely worse being in, of all pla all places to be transphobic, the psychology department. Lord have mercy. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Lord you. Lord have mercy. <laughs> um, um, hello. 
Hell, I'm oh, like, you guys supposed to be psych majors and y'all whacked out like this? What are you gonna do yes, to the I'm rest like, of the world? I'm like, okay, okay, and let me let me break this down for you. Okay, so with abnormal psych, that's where you learn about the DSM five, right? Okay. And the DSM five is where people learn about gender dysphoria. They they, when they had the students, and being that most of my classes are filled with women and there's only a couple of us guys in that room, mm -hmm. and being that I am the only one that is of trans experience, mm -hmm. the girls that present, I wanted to get that topic, but I didn't because she just picked people to do certain chapters. Okay. And so they literally presented gender dysphoria as if it was a cold. And if it was a what? A cold, something you can catch. <laughs> oh my God, no. And these are and the they, people that are getting ready to have a degree and to go out and try to teach us. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's yes. Like, you know what? There's a whole bunch of black people running around talking about they can catch being gay in the water. They can catch being <laughs> transgender in the water. They can catch Farrakhan is teaching this. That's what I'm saying. A lot of these mm. can't a lot of these this. women, they um they they follow um, problematic psychologists like Umar Johnson. Oh um, no, not him! Yes, him. Um, very problematic in him in himself. Um, oh, he's, he's another toxic one. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> and then and so yeah, there's that. And then when it came to human sexuality, that's where you start learning about what trans looks like. And looks it's like. very, yeah, and it's very one dimensional. So they look, they show body parts, they show all that, and it's very one dimensional and it's very outdated. And this body is why parts I pre op or post op or what they don't even talk about that, right? They don't. They don't. They really don't. Because I'm like, I'm like, the, oh, so the, this the, is just the, to convince everybody that you are the biology gender you were born as right no like they no okay so you know you know when it comes to bottom surgery there's like three different types of surgery well there's two different types of surgery metaplasy right. and fallow they right. only show um they don't even show meta or fallow they only show what you get from off being off of testosterone oh, oh, oh. so they're narrow-minded yeah, so these pictures are literally like if it was to be shown in a book out of like the 1960s or 70s. I'm like, oh my God. Now, you, you must know. You are horrified sitting in there and they don't even freaking know that you No, know because I literally, feel. like being, again, yeah, so I'm listening to all this. And when it came to that, I knew that <laughs> chapter was going to come up in that human sexuality class. And the teacher, he's fine. He's cool. He's. Yeah, but I'm like, some of but the things are very know, outdated. Right? He doesn't know. And so when it came to that class day, I literally skipped that class just so I can avoid the trauma associated with it. I might have skipped it too, because that just sounds like being... And honestly, I wish I could have skipped the same thing in my abnormal class, but I didn't know when we was going to present, so I didn't want to chance it. But literally, wow. the girls that came back, they, they tried, they basically was saying like, well, this is nonsense. Why would you... Why would people even, people even do this? And this is a white thing, and da da this, da da that. I'm like, white, a white thing. Like black people don't experience these things. Oh, oh god, oh my goodness. <laughs> and these are psychology majors. I'm a psychology minor. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I'm laughing. It just sounds so horrendous. I it is horrendous, imagine. but it's culture stuck in that environment it would give me a headache and so you you could see why i'm constantly in a state of rage yes sir. i'm jumpy all i'm i'm jumpy all the time well, you it's know, like i'm gonna <clears throat> invite you to connect with some brothers on this platform to help keep yourself sane because that just sounds like such a um It sounds like you're in the washing machine cycle and somebody took you out and threw you in the dryer and turned it on. But if you need to, gr <laughs> you need to ground uh, with some men and 
women or whatever you need, man. We're we're out here because yeah, you are stealth. And whoever it is that you find as your friend, even if it's on this platform, is going to respect you for that, but help you keep your head above water. Um, yeah. That environment sounds absolutely insane. It is, and it, which is the reason why I'm writing a book right now. Good for you. Which is, yeah. Because the education, we need to... I do studies throughout the year about transgender people the problem with those studies is that it takes them a long time to compile them, let alone get all that information out to, into the communities and out into society. You know, I'm in one that's lasted three years. And at the end of those three years, then they compile everybody and start putting the information out into the medical, medical industry, not even the education system, which then there's a whole bunch of black people who are saying, ah, they, we don't want our children educated about that yeah you know what i mean they don't they, it's like mm. they're they're rejecting it offhand so i don't know how that information is going to get into the schools at least in a university they are not children anymore if it no. gets to that level even though they're still treated like children yeah i know right but they're over 18, so they're over the age of consent. And they can't yeah. accuse transgender people or LGBT people of shoving the crap down their throat. Because that is what a lot of black cisgender heterosexual people are saying, is they're putting this stuff in, in uh, K schools. We don't want it. Yeah. Okay, well, fine. Well, we'll put it in universities where, they have, where it's an elective and they have a choice. But we got to debunk this shit that they're putting out that's from the 1940s and 50s and 60s about what uh, yeah like some people that I try and come up to and actually explain this stuff to while being like like seen as an alley or whatnot because I'm still stealth um I've come across women that literally choose to be ignorant they're like well they choose to be ignorant yes and then I've yes. come across people that oh my um, oh my god <laughs> Oh my God! People just, are just totally. I I know what you're trying to say, man, and and my heart goes out to you to even be able to sit through that and stay through that and still get your education and whatever you're going to college for. Um, it, it just seems like a real mind fuck. That yeah, it is. Society is freaking doing about anybody in the LGBT. Q plus. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, because I mean, I've had, I've had some people, oh, I've had some black people on campus, and these are like, you make these are not sweat. students, these are these are professors and graduate students, telling me, well, you need to um, be patient with black people when it comes to um, trans because it's new. Uh, to no, that. It's gonna I'm take like, no, it's patience. No, I'm like, if, 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 if you're telling me to be patient, to be patient on how you, how you react to me and my experience of just being me, then you need to take that same attitude when it comes to white people and racism. Hmm. Good point. Good point. You are a smart young man. I just wish you had more of a support system. I am going to try the best that I can to be part of that support for you. Um, I mean, I have even if you just need some, to um, I have some, but it's, it's it don't really last that long. So, well, it depends. I'm a father. Yeah, because I'm a chosen father of many around the world, and have. To. Sometimes I feel like. Sometimes I feel like people just say they support me just to say that they're an ally, and they don't really they're, support. They're what allies? Yeah, just to say that they're an ally or to make themselves feel good. Some, so sometimes I, I question people when they say they support me because I don't really well, know. Well, support like, is shown, not just said. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, well, okay. Well, there are some people that are hearing this and think this is an incredible freaking story that I'm sure are going to be a real support to you, not just say they're supporting to look good. Um, I do what I do without anybody even knowing they know the outsides of what I do, that I'm an international mentor and father of many. But my children will tell you 
that I am, and I do support them when they reach out to me. So it just screw all the what trying to look good stuff. You will be able to tell who is trying to look good and who is actually uh, listening to you and helping you through this. I want to see you get a degree. I want to see you walk across that stage despite all this nonsense. Well, I'm going to be walking 2020. 2020? All right. Mm -hmm. See? You're doing it. But, hey, one of the strongest things about me is that I ask for help and I accept help from others. If God wanted us to be an island unto ourselves and to isolate it, we wouldn't have 7 billion people on the planet. So there are somebody, there is somebody out there who isn't full of shit and will really be in your corner for you, man. And just, I'm one of them. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm sure the other guys that are watching this and other people watching this feel the same way. So with that, uh, we need to, hold on, don't go anywhere. Uh, there was one more, Okay. Okay, there is one more guy that is going to come in here, but I want you to keep your head up. Um, you know, just keep on pushing, man. I know what you're going through is tough. I can't imagine the nightmare called your school and the people in it, especially in the psychology department. Oh, my God. Uh, but It's everywhere, on. literally. You just hang tough, man. You just hang tough because you're going to get through this. You're going to make it, all right? I appreciate it. You're welcome. And if I have another topic coming up that can touch you, I'll run it past you to see if you want to be a part of that, too. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. You have a good rest of your Sunday and stay away from <laughs> as much as you can. <laughs> oh, my God. I would want to do this. Just, oh, my God. <sighs> and more. I'm too old for that shit. But anyway, you have a good one, okay, man? All right. All right. Take care. Wow. Amazing. All right, man. I'm, we're going to bring one more guy in here. Woo-wee, that was something else, wasn't it, folks? Um, we're going to bring in... Let me, let me find you, man. Because I saw you. Uh, but I got to find you with my phone. Uh, who we that was something else, you know. That's why, uh, raise your hand again, um, Shah. Say something. There you are. Let me see you down there. You know, that's why education. Uh oh, you're not in green, sir. I tell you what, man, jump out and jump back in, and then I might see you to add you, Sha. Because I don't see you down here in green. But that was one heck of a story, folks. And if he can get through that, we need to support that brother. Because he's in the washing machine cycle of bullshit in America. He's, he's experiencing it raw and real and today yet he is st oh oh here you go i just i don't know what i did but i just saw the um wow i'm sweating i wanna i wanna i wanna <laughs> i'm ready to kill the people in the psychology department i forgot what school he was even going to down here in the south oh, jesus hey shaw what's happening man What's up? What's up? Did you hear all that? Huh? Yeah, we're in uh, top of this mountain. I'm unclipping from my snowboard right now. Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Wow. You know, yeah. I thought um, redefining myself as a man was hard, but... Him having to do that by himself is just absolutely amazing to me. For real. Yeah. So what about you? What has been your experience in this whole... Oh, wow. 
I'm still tripping about poor pretty boy. All right. So, uh, my name is Shaw. Um, uh, I basically s- started transitioning maybe within uh, the start of oh, se- uh, 2017, actually. Well, that's when I my brain clicked that, oh, shit, something's up. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was more like, oh, man, uh, I didn't know. That's I didn't what know. I said too. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't know. Oh, it was no. that. It, it wasn't that I had prejudice or that around me. It was just that I just wasn't around that. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't my eyes just didn't see it. But then when I realized that, oh man, this is this is what I am. Then I realized they were in front of me. People like me were in front of me. My whole eyes. I just didn't know it. You know, I just I didn't see them. Uh, I didn't either. Yeah. Um. Man, I saw a guy on TV. I saw Chaz Bono. That was the first really? trans man I ever knew of. I know they were around, but I just never saw him. You know, you're right. I think he might have been the first one. <laughs> the first one I saw, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute. What? And then I just, I was like, I was in a trance. I was like, wow. Right. It's a, yeah, so for me, it was just a, just a surprise, more like it. And it was just like, well, that's why I've been seeing the I way I've been. Doc. And then I went, uh-oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> I think I'm like him. But uh, I don't want to be like him. You know, I was like, no. I, you know, so that's when you were still trying to figure it out. Sorry. So well, he had these really bushy, um, he had these bushy sideburns, and I and no, I thought, no, well, he, he looks no, like him. That's my hair. That's definitely that's my hair. I got this. Uh, yeah, that's my hair. No, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Chaz. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was different, but I, I wasn't. I wasn't sure. I. I've noticed that I don't pay attention to other people's experiences as much as I should, I guess, to feel more comfortable with them myself. I kind of just make the experience my own. I had to hear him. I had to hear his story for it to start clicking in my head. Yeah, you're right. We all have to in order to be able to make it, you know, to uh, to understand, uh, like, you know, just to understand what we might be feeling or just to get some type of... I don't know, uh, familiarity, I guess, with just how we feel, because, you know, everyone else around us d- doesn't feel that way most of the time. I, I, My friends, my main friend group was lesbians. So, yeah. you know, the experiences was definitely different in mine. And for me, I didn't understand why they like things a certain way. And me, I was just understanding, like, well, I know I'm different from my friends, but they would mess with me about it. But then I would be like, oh, whatever. It's no big deal. But then when I found out there was a name, I was like, oh, oh. It was a word is... for it. Yeah. Oh, I'm having the worst time trying to put my bindings on. What so I've decided to put to put on? I decided to chase my best self, I guess, and do what I've always wanted to do, which is uh, snowboard. And oh, you like that's... To snowboard. Cool. Yeah, and, and that right there is part of me, like, kind of doing what people told me, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that when I was younger and everything, when I was representing myself as a lesbian, I was like, oh, this is... Uh-oh. You're freezing up. Let's hope you um unfreeze here. Or are you just freezing to me because I'm seeing you? Yeah, something's going on with your connection. Listen, I did all of the sports that, um, because he looks like he's frozen. I did, yeah, he did just blink off. Um, when you come back in, Shah, raise your hand, because we still want to hear more of what you have to say. Um, when I was young, I did everything boys did. I had an awareness of this when I was eight years old. 
but I was in the Midwest, very conservative state. I didn't have a word for this, so I didn't know. But they could not stop me from doing all of these boy things because I was a boy. And the girls didn't understand why I was always hanging out with boys. It's because I was a boy. I just didn't have a word for what was going on with me. I didn't understand it either. Um, yeah, he is froze, man. And he and he and it he flipped out of the live. So I'm gonna wait a few minutes and try to fill in the dead space. Um, but yeah, they you know insist on putting dresses on me, and I just tear them up, climbing trees, playing football, playing baseball. Uh, they told me girls couldn't um, high jump. Oh no, couldn't pole vault. I learned how to pole vault anyway. I mean, there was no way they could completely block out the fact that I was a boy and I knew I was a boy, but just didn't have a word for what the heck, why I was a boy and I was missing the genitals of one. So this was the 1960s, folks, that I became aware the first time I saw genitals that something was up. Um... We're still waiting for Sha to find his uh, link back into here. Maybe I should put this live and, and he can just click it and come back in, put the, put the link to this in here so that he can find it very quickly. But listen, you know, you can't pray this stuff away. You can't psychosis away. You can't. <laughs> this is for the world to accept, not to rebuke, not to refuse not to refute, not to argue with, not to do anything with. And for anybody out there who thinks that they can try to tell a 61-year-old man how to be a man, think again. It's for each one of us to define for ourselves. Even if we go way out into left field with it and end up toxic, there's enough life lessons out there that is going to knock the shit out of us for being so. And if you haven't noticed in the media these days, all these guys that are way out there in left field are being bumped on the head and told this is inappropriate. So if a man is really going to be a man and not have the circle of people around him just as toxic as he is, then he will learn. Otherwise, society be damned because there's enough of them running around the planet to destroy the planet. I'll just leave it there. Um, we're still waiting for you to come back, Sha. I'm still waiting to see you, man. Um, but so, so yeah, what what it means to be a man is as varied as every individual on the planet. You know, you, for people who are not transgender or one of the LGBT, look around your circle. Not every man is the same kind of man. Not every man does the same kind of things. Not every man dresses the same. Not every man. There are men that just cross the whole spectrum of life. And it's for each man to, def to, to define for himself with a little guidance and a little coaching uh, a little mentorship. We need to mentor our young. I mean, look at what that guy that just was on here is going through. And if he can manage to define himself and redefine himself given what he's faced, I hold myself personally responsible to be there for that young man. I do. No way do I feel comfortable letting him swim those shark-infested waters alone. I guess um, Shaw is, uh, oh, who we got here? But yeah, if men start holding themselves responsible and accountable for who they're being as men, we could turn this humanity around, for real. Um, problem is the lack of accountability. I see some guy doing some fucked up shit, I'm going to say something. I'm not going to go along with the crowd like uh, R. Kelly's people have done with him. 
That, that man needed to be turned around a long time ago, and I bet you if his circle of people weren't so spineless and greedy, they'd have helped that man not go down the path he went down. Um, I know you wish you had your voice, man. I know you do. I know you would have something to say about this, too, all of this stuff. Um, so, again, um, oh, who is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess um, he just lost the connection entirely because he did not come back in here. Um, I'm looking for Shaw Hill. Uh, you know, I could talk on and on and on, but I, I don't want this to be all about me and my opinion. Um, you know, as something said, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. But I would, and I would hope that people can tell the difference between someone's heart, someone's being genuine, someone being authentic, and someone who is not. Um, I try to make these topics as realistic as, as possible, and with the help of you guys that I don't even freaking know, you come in here and you hit a home run with the things that you were talking about the, and, and the experiences that you have. And I want to thank you for being real and raw and giving us all lessons about what it's like out there to be us right now. It breaks my heart what that man is going through, what that young man is going through. It's my worst, that, that was one of my worst fears is that I would run into a wall of people like the ones he ran up against and then try to have to redefine myself while in the face of a whole bunch of people rejecting me and telling, telling me it wasn't okay to be who I am. Uh, luckily, I is, am independent and I didn't have to rely on anybody to get permission, quote unquote, to be who I am. Um, like I said, I was 58 years old when I stopped fighting this. It was 2012 when I realized what was going on and then all of the memories of my childhood came back. And it took me three years to embrace it. And, um, and then all of this time to be defining and redefining and redefining myself as a man, what kind of man I want to be, what kind of man I don't want to be. And that's where the toxicity part comes in or leaves. Um, yeah, so it's, it's up to everybody to kind of uh, check your mental compass. Check your God compass. If you don't have a God, check the universe compass. Is the kind of man that you're being helpful to society and helpful to the world, or is it just helpful to your ego? Yes, my ego got bigger. Uh, I don't know why testosterone did that, but it did that. But I still have to have checks and balances within myself and keep looking and keep talking um, to my friends, to my inner circle. Uh, therapy is important as you're beginning the beginning transition of uh, uh, into manhood from, from how most of us were socialized. Not all of us, but most of us were socialized as the wrong gender because nobody else around us wanted to admit what was going on. I had an uncle two years ago tell me I knew, I knew it. I knew it when you were young, but he didn't have a word for it either at the time. So nobody could support me in who I was because I didn't even know who I was. Um, but now that I do, it's respect me or bye bye. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Um, so anyway, yes, we did lose him. And I'm going to wrap this up a little early. I was hoping we could go till about, wait a minute. So we can go until about 10 o'clock. Um, there's one more guy in here who may or may not want to say anything, and I will ask, I will call him out. My name's Sake. You in here? Ray. Are you still online? Okay, well, that was the, the last guy. I start out usually with a whole group of men um, just to ensure some of us are able to speak because a lot of things come up for people um, when I go live, even though I keep I do check in with them. 
uh, as the time gets closer to going live. I want to thank everybody for following us over to this live because the first one got cut off for some reason. And, um, and I'm going to try to schedule these things every month on a different topic. Um, it may not always be the last Sunday of the month because I'm finding out that a lot of things happen on the last Sunday of the month in this country. So maybe I'll look at... Oh. No, you're the wrong Ray. We didn't talk about... Who... No, Ray Ray. <laughs> I'm not sure what Ray you are. Who are you, which way? Let me see who you are. Um, are you going through this, Mr. Andre? Are you going through this? Would you like to speak? Let's see who you are. Are you going through this, man? If you're not, you can end up out of here real quick. Hold on. Okay, he and I haven't talked, so I don't know if he knows what this topic is really about. Uh, hello, yeah. Mr. Ray. Hey, how you doing? Good. Have you been following? Yeah, I've been listening, yeah, I've been listening to you tonight. Okay. I met, I met you tonight at the, at the, at the other oh meeting. Oh, my God, you're right. Well, we're not supposed to talk about where we meet each other. <laughs> wow. How you doing? I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have my glasses on, so I couldn't see that until I looked up. at. I've also got myself on my big monitor so yeah how you doing i'm good i'm good see you made it i, I kind of caught you i kind of caught you in the middle of the of those second part you so did I had to okay. catch yeah so is, <laughs> hey what do you think about this topic <laughs> and what's been said it's a very interesting topic because it's just like you said um learning about your manhood and learning about the fact that we do exist. Um, I'm 62 and I've only been transitioning for one year. Oh my God. I want to fist pump you. Black don't yeah. crack, do it. No, it don't. <laughs> and I'm going to say it um, again for people that didn't hear it on the first time. I invited a whole bunch of people in here that weren't black. They just didn't show up or they had, other things to do. So anyway, um, wow, you're 62? Yeah. Well, you're just now finding out I'm right behind you. Uh-huh. Well, you're actually in front of me because uh, as far well, as your I'm transition goes. Well, yeah, my transition, but I'm 61. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I heard that. So, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking for to get more knowledge as to the whole experience. And I just recently, this past year, being that I had my first year anniversary, I've been trying to figure out what is my manhood. What? How do I? How do I um, define that? Define myself and define that. What is? What is that all about? And I've been Happy watching. Anniversary. Hey, thank you, thank you. So I've been trying to get information from all different walks of life. By, from either cis men or other trans men, which is why I've been trying to I'm mostly observation yes. and yes. talking with self yes. and bouncing stuff off of your inner circle people. Correct. Because my, my circle of people being that I was mostly around um, femmes or, or um, LGBT people, I'm finding that that circle is changing. And at first, it, I didn't. Expect well, are they supportive, and, though? Some people are, some people aren't. Mm -hmm. And I think some people might even be in the closet about whether they are supporting. Because nobody's actually come out and say, uh, well, I don't support you. But you can see a difference in the way they talk to you and the way they respond to you. 
Yeah, they think they think you can't see it, but we can yeah. see it. We can see it. We can feel it. We can see yeah. it. We can see what they don't say. Right. We can see what they don't ask. We can see what they do ask. They can't hide that they right. have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> And that, and that's the other thing too that I'm looking at. Okay, I'm trying to understand what, how I should react to it or how I should feel about it, whether I should or if I shouldn't. So I'm asking myself a whole lot of questions, one left and right, yeah. whether this is a good thing, whether this is a bad thing, if I should or if I shouldn't. So that's that's, that's exactly what, what we all go through. Is yeah, it's like that. I'm glad you yeah. said that because it re reminded me of the beginning, my first year. Um, uh oh, God, got it. I need to go into low power mode. I don't know what that's going to do to this live. Um, but yeah, we we all go through that. Yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, I think I just. Oh, okay. Um, You're still. So, so it's been a very interesting. It's been a very interesting journey for me. I'm enjoying it. I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, sometimes every now and then there'll there'll be a little setback of doubt, but I'm like, no, it's not going to be any doubt. We're not. I'm not even going to entertain that idea. I'm doing what I'm supposed to have done a long time ago, and I wish I had known about it a long time ago because I would have been done it. I've been contemplating it, but I was like. How are people going to react? And I'm like, why are you thinking that? Because I've never been a person to worry about what other th people think. Yeah. Growing I, up. Uh, my same thought is, why am I, <laughs> I don't care what people, well, why am I all of a sudden caring? What yeah. other people uh, thought? I'm not sure. Yeah. Why. And it, and it kind of can flip flopping. You know, yeah. it's like you said earlier, you said earlier something about, as you start your transitioning, you go back to your childhood. And I went back to my childhood plenty of times thinking about, okay, this is why you was doing this. And yes, I was a tomboy. I was a boy. I could do anything better than any boy. I was very good. Sports, I was better than my brothers. I could do anything. Yep. And it, it kind of, yeah. And it kind of, I think it threw my father off because I think he probably knew, but he didn't want to admit it. Mm. But yet and still, you take me under your wing like I'm your son. Oh, did he? And you showed me, yeah. He showed me stuff. We, when, he did, when he did work around the house, when my, my, my dad did work around the house, God bless his soul, he's gone now. He, I, mean, I was the there. Piece. He didn't take my brothers. Huh? Yeah. You keep talking. I'm yeah. going to go get a charger and put it in my phone. Okay. Yeah. He, he, um, you know, I was the one that was there under his wing, learning how to paint the house, learning how to take care of homes, how to, how to fix this, how to fix that. My brothers were younger than me. It's not that they couldn't be there, but oh, they were the oldest. He, yeah. I'm the oldest. He didn't, he didn't pull them in and ask them to, when dad needed something to do, he called me. Because he ah. knew I would get it done. <laughs> cool. So when, you know, when he found out that I like women, it kind of threw him off. And it, it didn't even dawn on him that, um, but you kind of was grooming me as a man. And you didn't really realize it. I didn't yeah, know well, I liked my women. Dad didn't, my dad didn't know either that I was watching everything he did. Yeah. Um, he had no idea because I didn't have a way to tell him that, well, dad, I'm watching you because I'm a boy. <laughs> he knows now. Yeah. But he's still a little timid. Uh, I started joking with him about my face and the shaver and stuff like that. And he, he hasn't mm -hmm. been able to, to respond, but I know he's starting to grapple with it and trying to understand it. And, um, I'm going to win him over, though, because you know what? I am his child. <laughs> right. Right. Um, this is, this is but you got, you got the works, man. You got, you got taught all sorts of things, huh? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't mind it. I didn't I enjoyed it, but he didn't like the fact that I was his only girl running around in the street with all the boys cuz I grew up in New York. And in New York, you you the only way you play is in the streets. Yeah. New York City or yeah. New York around uh, New- in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay. In Brooklyn. Yeah, he was he was in the city. Yeah. So yeah, he didn't he didn't like that. He's like, you the only girl running out there with around the, with all the boys. I'm like, and I don't care what everybody else thinks. Why are you wearing we realize about? that because we're boys. Yeah. Yeah. We just don't they, look yeah. like look like we them, just don't... everything that I thought there were periods throughout my life that this kept coming up and I kept right. smacking it down for right. some reason because I didn't have a word for it. So I right. kept I kept saying, Oh, that's interesting, and then I keep it moving, right? Right, right. <laughs> See, and there was one. There was one point in my life where my when my dad decided that I wasn't going to get any more allowance from him. I said, "Okay, so I'll go out there and get me a job." By that time, now I'm getting. I'm in high school. In high school, I didn't use my first name. My given name, really? I changed it to a boy. You did, yeah. and you got away with that. I changed it. I got away with it. Wow. In all my classes. All my classes, you didn't yeah, call me my first name. You called the nineteen seventies. Yes. Wow. Yes, and all my teachers and all my friends called me by my boy name. Wow. And I don't even so know why cool. I did it. <laughs> I mean, so I, I never even thought cool. about why I did it, but I did. It, it was even on my letter jacket. That is awesome, man. But now I didn't, I'm, now but I'm envious of you. <laughs> but the one thing the, the one thing I realized that when I was home in my neighborhood amongst all my other friends mm-hmm. they never called me by that name I never told them that I didn't tell them they had to call me that oh okay even though okay. even so though you, I was so you had street, you was like I had like a, a double personality ride. yeah yeah mm. but so. I did walk around with the jacket on Nobody never questioned me about the jacket. The jacket did go home. My parents did see it. But and they never questioned me about it. They never questioned? Oh, man, that's so cool. Yeah. It's kind well, of weird, though. Well, yeah, because you were... Well, I felt like I was living a double life, too. Even though I didn't understand why. I right. felt like, well, why are y'all treating me like this when I'm acting like that so yeah. i was also doing that doing that double life yeah uh, i was a musician well i played the trombone when i was well, in uh junior high school and i got to wear ties and i loved the i was trying to wear that thing when band practice wasn't happening <laughs> and my mother looked at me like okay you can take it off now and i'm like i'd rather not but you know i didn't I would take it off, but I would try to wear that thing when I wasn't in band class. Because that was who I was without understanding that's who I was. So I had to flip back and forth uh, for them. Right. Wow. And then once I finally did come out and told my mom that I like women, she was like, oh, I already knew that. (laughs) Your mom said that. How do you know that? I didn't even know that. Cause that's what I exactly I said to her. It's like, how you know? I didn't even know. Yeah, how did? Because you I know what? My grandmother said that to me. She yeah. said, "We were just sitting there, and my grandmother was ultra religious, and I'm sitting there one day eating, drinking hot chocolate at her house, and she said, you know, you be liking them girls, don't you? I swear to God, I turned sheet white. I was like, oh, yeah. I, I just did. froze." What? How? What? How did she? What? Yeah. I I never answered her. She knew. Yeah. And something else. So, but doesn't that make you feel more free right now to read, to ground yourself in who you are as a man now? 
Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. I've had people come up to me and tell me, you look like this is what you're supposed to be, who you're supposed to be. It fits you. I see you be, I see you more peaceful now. A lot of people have said that to me. Wow. Because I'm actually going through the transitioning with my church. Wow. My church is, my church is actually allowing me to do this in front of them. Because I announced it to them when I started to do it. Oh, that's Because I spoke to my pastor. Yeah, because I spoke to my pastor about it. And she was like, yeah, this would be a good thing because then people can learn through you. And then we can see the process. Oh, and we that can teach is so them. awesome. Is this a denominational church or is this a different kind of, is this one of those churches that um, are more open? You know, every time somebody asks me that question, I always forget the, the correct definition of what my church is, but I would call it non-denominational. We are an inclusive church. Okay. We, we invite all walks of life. Yeah, there you are don't have some to. down here yeah. like that. Yeah. I went to churches like that on the West Coast. Okay. Well, we're and part of the team. How many that I like to hear because they're mostly, even though they're non-denominational, they're mostly <laughs> Christian based, where my beliefs are more metaphysical based. I would say we're probably Christian and Baptist, a little bit of everything to me. Okay. Okay. Because we're part of the key fam family. Awesome, man, that they want to <laughs> They yeah. want to experience you and, and be with you through this journey. Yeah. I mean, we have a couple of other people in our church that's, that's um, trans men also. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. That's way cool. Yeah. Man, if you don't, uh, well, if you don't I'll mind. Invite, I'll, invite you, I'll invite you to come. Okay. Okay, I'm not much of a morning person, so if the services are on a Sunday. No, we morning, have service at, no, we have service at noon. At noon? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gee, you know, we'll talk later when we get off yes. this uh, live, but because yeah, uh, that would be something for the men in this area to know, or mm -hmm. transgender people to know if they want to get connected to a church that is inclusive. Right. Right. And we I know of the another word of church them. too that yeah I, I don't know its name right now but they have a uh, life lesson type of thing going on on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock but yeah. my my Tuesdays are booked up until March okay so I'll have to wait for then I I went to tea talks at that church did you enjoy uh, it oh oh yeah. It, it it was it was pretty off the chain because it wasn't a church service. It was a special workshop for it was transgender talks. So they had okay. the entire panel was transgender, and there were mm -hmm. men and women and the spouses of men and women, and it was off the chain. But we've I don't done, think they. Hmm? We've we've done two two types of uh, transgender uh, conversation talks like that so far, okay. but we're actually looking to do more and reach out to more people hmm. as far as that okay. is concerned. Because I, I was just talking to my pastor about it this morning. That wow. you know, I've been to a couple of different seminars and stuff. So she was like, yeah, get more information and get more involved. And maybe we can bring that to our church. And this way we can teach more people and reach more people. Yes, sir. That's the name of the yeah. game right there. Yes. Because I mean, the we're all about people getting Indian. used to us being around I just think that's better all the way around. You know, that is how the LGB back in the day moved themselves right. forward. It's just, right. it was all about an education. Education and love. And love. You, love and, and love. acceptance mm -hmm. and education. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wow. Oh, oh this has been amazing. I'm just yeah. loving this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... And then I had the nerve to meet you today. Not even, uh, Lord, I don't know where you were sitting. Where were you sitting? I was sitting at the other end of the table. That's why, because we, I was, oh, at, okay. I was at the furthest end. Okay. Yeah, Remember, I had on the know, vest and the tie by the guy with the suit. Or I was the guy, the guy with the suit. That's me. Oh, 
remember. Why do you look so different right now? Uh, because I put my do rag on my head and I'm sitting by my bed. That's it. That's it's got to be yeah. this. <laughs> you do not look like the same guy that I saw sitting at the edge of the table. But that was a handsome man then. <laughs> yeah, you were you were you were pretty fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but man, I am so glad that you that I did call your name when I called somebody else, but you yeah. <laughs> you were in here. Um but I just so appreciate this breadth of uh just as different experiences. And hopefully I'll be able to do this on a regular, only once a month. But okay. I let, I scheduled them out a month ahead of time. Right. Then I have little talks with uh, each of the people that are going to be in it just to make sure that, you know, we're on the same page kind of. And then I just let it rip. Understood. But so I'm glad that you're doing it. I'm glad that you're doing it because it gives me a, a, an outlet and a way to gather information and to contribute my growth. Yes, sir. And the network if you want to. I mean, I, yes. these guys I don't necessarily know. I just put a flyer in groups and then they either reach out to me or I reach out to them and we make it happen. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yes, sir. What is that? Hey, Quante. Hey, Quante. Um, <laughs> So is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? No, that's pretty much it. Um, um, well, keep on trudging, man. We all gonna, we all are in various phases in this journey and, um, and we will all get there together. Yes, we love will. And, love mm -hmm. and acceptance. And um, if we have to do it, prop each other up to do it, then we can spread the word. Amen to that. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank sir. you. We'll talk right. to you later. Talk to you later. Well, I hope that gave. Um, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. So I hope that gave everybody a pretty. I love you too, Quante. Um, everybody, uh, just a little taste of what I started. Like, wow, I think it was more like six months ago that I started doing these things and then I had to stop because I had surgery on my eye and I just, ugh, that, the, the, the recovery for that was 90 days and I had a hard time for those 90 days until December. But we'll be doing it again and I hope everybody enjoys the rest of their Sunday and um, Ray Gibson is out for the night. Thank you. <laughs>